Yo, MC Starman here with my dear friend and co-pilot, Dayana Robinson. Hello. Thank you so much for all the support. We've been getting some great compliments uh, on uh, comments and compliments and questions and great engagement uh, with our new subscribers. And um, we're up to 13... 13. Cool. Fascinating. And so thank you so much for the support, you guys. We got uh, a Capricorn. Um, so what do we call this? We called it the seasonal. Monthly. The monthly. Why don't you put the slide on? <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Forecast. The astrological monthly forecast. Capricorn, the fish goat. Ambition, structure, and discipline. The sun enters into Capricorn on the 21st, 2023, and on the January 28th, 2024. Uh, it leaves Capricorn, so we're going to flesh out Capricorn for you to goat fish. Um, so what is your experience of, of the goat fish? The goat fish. Um, <laughs> Capricorn is, I guess the basics are that it's a feminine sign, it's a cardinal sign, and it's an earth sign. And I look at Capricorn very much um, as like the hard worker and the sensitive but also um there's yeah there's like this polarity there's strong polarity in Capricorn between the sensitive and the hard worker kind of gruff and also between the the higher realms and understanding and then the also understanding of the day-to-day -day needs um yeah you said a lot there let's flesh that out so uh Capricorn as an earth sign mm -hmm. So then it's the last of the earth signs. We have Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. And so the signs of Capricorn, I mean, the earth signs are concerned with my foundation in life. You know, being comfortable in my body. Taurus, it's all about me and my body and what, <clears throat> gives me stability and nurturing and what I love. Virgo is about everything organized in the world. And Capricorn, it's about building something. Mm -hmm. So it's an earth sign. Then it is a cardinal sign. So we have four cardinal signs. We have Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Capricorn is the last cardinal sign. What is a cardinal sign? Uh, cardinal signs are the initiators and the beginning of a new season. So it's the beginning of winter. It's often looked like at the beginning of solstice. Um, yeah, initiator is usually what I sum up Capricorn to or uh cardinal signs too quickly. So it's Earth, but it's initiating Earth. Mm -hmm. So then um it's ambitious and it wants to have something. Uh and then it's a feminine sign. Mm -hmm. So what is that? And that's what I wanted to talk maybe a little bit about is you know so we have cancer mm -hmm. which is the opposite of Capricorn and Capricorn Cancer it's known as the parental axis, right? We have the mother cancer and we have Capricorn, kind of the father that provides the structure to the family. And so then this Capricornian structure, it's a feminine sign. So we've been trying to introduce a little bit of... Um, Young in each video. Last time somebody really commented they love the apotropaic. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, I joined the channel just because you use the word apotropaic. <laughs> uh, so 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 from a from so we know the feminine and the masculine sign from a union perspective, that's the introvert and the extrovert. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. How is the feminine nature an introverted nature? Because uh, the energy is about the containment on like an inner in our world but also because the feminine nature typically internally is expressed when we show up as masculine and then the vice versa when we show up as feminine the internal internal containment is often shown up as the masculine well the key there is the container right mm -hmm. so 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 the feminine energy is an introverted energy. What that means, introvert means that what's really important to me is not what's outside. It's not having an influence on the outside world. What's important to me is what goes on inside. How do I feel? How how am I doing? What's my you know? So it's it's it, it's a it's a introverted what's really important is my own self-development my home, own nurturing and when we nurture ourselves, and when those things are important to us when introversion is important to us then it allows us to provide a safe container for another because we're concerned about how do you feel mm -hmm. if i am concerned first and foremost about how i feel and what nurtures me and what's good for me then naturally I'll want to contain you. Mm -hmm. If I'm concerned with extroversion and making an influence on there out there, then I, I don't have those feminine safe container. I have a masculine shine my light into the world kind of ideal. Um, and so then the so then then it's interesting because Capricorn then and Cancer are feminine signs. And so the kind of ambition that that can that Capricorn has is actually an introverted ambition, mm -hmm. which is a lot about the symbol of the goatfish. Why don't you show the slide? How did that feel? It's a really good explanation for um, feminine energy and introversion. The introvert and the extrovert as the feminine introvert and the masculine extrovert. So here we have um, the constellation of Capricorn. So we see the head of the goat, the mountain goat, and the fish tail. And so, so then, then if we continue our study there, the mountain goat is concerned with climbing the mountain mm -hmm. but it has a goat a, a fish tail so it's concerned about the feelings and the emotions and the unconscious so so that the type of ambition manifested in capricorn is one that is conscious of the depth of my emotion and that's why it's an mm -hmm. introverted sign yes we are ambitious Yes, we want security, but why do we want security and comfort and structure so that we can be happy in our emotional watery side? <laughs> so then cancer, it, you know, then you can really see the, the opposite of Capricorn. You know, they say in astrology that if you have a sign, if you dig deep enough, you're going to get to its opposite. So if you dig deep enough into Capricorn, you're going to get the, you know, to cancer, the nurturing. And the same thing with cancer. If you dig deep enough into a cancer, you're going to get the opposite, the Capricorn, who's, you know, who really loves security and structure and comfort and ease. And so it's an ambitious, but it's an ambition that's based on a feminine attitude, mm. which is really important when you study Capricorn. Does that make sense? It is. It's also really fitting for this time of year, at least coming in from the Northern Hemisphere, where there's a lot of like New Year's resolutions are done at this time of year, Capricorn season, and, and there's the beginning of a new year. It's the wrap, beginning of, well, Christmas kind of falls in Capricorn season, the beginning of it. And a lot of new ambitions take place, but they tend to be more internal ones, like new resolutions of 
I'm going to do this for myself, or I'm going to create this mission, or I'm going to follow through with these things for myself. And they tend to be more internal needs and emotional needs um, than they are like building, you know, it's really building a house in the middle of winter here. <laughs> well, it's interesting, you know, uh, the Capricorn, you know, we, uh, you know, we identify it as being ambitious, but in our society, we don't, you know, if you don't, if you don't have the cancer side of Capricorn, mm -hmm. then you're just uh, really building you know things without the sense of foundation on your emotion and so you know th that's really an important point to 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 build on your emotional feeling nature your mothering nature and that's the sign of capricorn i wonder too if because i know like in pop astrology capricorn is sometimes referred to as a bit like hard-headed and cold and I wonder if that's a bit more connection to the fact that they're just focused more on there is, I mean, not them, because I never want to assume a person with the sign, but the energetic uh, makeup is more supported to your internal. What they say about Capricorn is that they're old when they're young and they're young when they're old. I heard that too. Well. And, yeah. and, and, and so why is that? Because the, the comfort and the security is of primal importance to the Capricorn. Mm -hmm. So when so they tend to be very serious, they're not so emotional, but there is a deep, deep emotional nature. That's why that fish, you know, tail mm -hmm. to the goat, you know, it, it and it may look like they're busy climbing the mountain but they doing it for their kids they're doing it for their family they're doing it for an emotional reason and if you touch that in a capricorn then they'll be very very loyal to you mm -hmm. and they'll be very very good friends and really good partners to build something but you got to get to the heart <laughs> love it Shall we show what's up next? Yes, let's do that. So, so the ruler of Capricorn. So that's why Capricorn gets this, you know, so this is, uh, and you have a quote that you were going to read from uh, Liz Green, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, before we get to that, Saturn. So here you have a, a picture of Saturn, Saturnus in Latin. And some interesting symbols. First, at his feet, you have the mountain goat, fish goat, the Capricorn. And then you got the water bear, Aquarius, you know, pouring the water and the fish goat. So those, you know, so that is the ruler, the, the signs that Saturn rules. Then you have a few very interesting things. You got the... Uruboros, the the dragon that eats its own tail, <laughs> and that's a symbol, an ancient alchemical symbol of the transformation of the selves through the conflict of opposites. And and so then Saturn is about the mastery of the self. It's about, you know, cre resol resolving the opposite with one's own nature. So that's a very interesting symbol. Then you have the sickle, but you also have the, you know, the, what is that called? This here? Uh -huh, the site, the, you know, that's what you do the harvest with. So, um, I usually call it a sickle. Well, a sickle is a small one, and he oh. usually carries the sickle also. In the, in, and we have a picture of him too with the sickle. But this is the what the Grim Reaper has, right? Yeah. And Saturn often is related to the Grim Reaper. So we have the tool of the harvest. So Saturn is is always um, involved with this uh, harvest. And then you're going to share something with that. And then you have a child. And Saturn has a very interesting habit <laughs> that he doesn't like competition. 
So he eats his own children because the prophecy is that his own child will become the king in his place, mm -hmm. which is the myth of Jupiter and Saturn or uh, Zeus and Kronos. And so the renewal of the old king. You want to share that quote with Liz Green? Um, sure. So it's a piece of a paragraph um, from the Astrology of Faith. By Liz Green. If you know our astrology and our uh, work, you know that we love Liz Green and we recommend. I just ordered two new Liz Green books, by the way. That's exciting. That is exciting. For Capricorn, whose familiar goat is one of the oldest symbols of le lechery, lust, and fertility, the diamond circles downwards again, and the spirit refreshed by its re revelation of the light of the heaven now prepares for its initiation into bondage in the name of the Father. That's not actually the quote I was going to No, no, that's not at all. Here, sorry. <laughs> it, it we is, gave you that as a bonus. Yeah, <laughs> more good thoughts for Capricorn. But the theme of sacrifice of the old king to ensure the fertility of crops is an ancient motive, which I relate particularly to the sign Capricorn. The king must die, the new king must be born, and the two must fight and in death be revealed as one. So in I've, I've been reading a lot about um, the great mother and some of uh, Jung's disciples studies into uh, matriarchy, especially Eric Neumann um, and his book on the great mother, but uh, also Charles Kerenyi and so many others. Um, I've laid the foundation for a study of what the matriarchy was like. And so those kings were actually servants of the mother. And every year, the feminine would get rid of a new king. It would get rid of the king and would burn up the king as an offering to, um, to the gods uh, for the renewal of the crops. Wow. And, you know, throughout history, it changed, you know, and then, but the, the throne and all of these symbols were all matriarchal symbols. And the king actually sat on the feminine and it got its power from the feminine. Uh, but of course, with the patriarchal age, you know, that, you know, masculine energy. And, and, and that really explains why there's so much tension between the masculine and the feminine and, you know, this patriarchy and this matriarchy um, and the struggle associated with who's got the power. Um, it's ages old. Mm -hmm. uh, in a matriarchal society, men were not respected and women were independent. Um, and so now we have the opposite. And so, you know, this, 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 this tension that exists between masculine and feminine is that Uruboros, right? It's the, the uniting of the opposites, which has always been there. It's a challenge. And so then the mother gives born to birth to the son who becomes the king, who then becomes overpowered by his own son and so then we have one of the most beautiful myths that comes down to us is the myth of the holy grail mm -hmm. and Persi uh, not persephone parsifal mm -hmm. the holy fool who leaves his mother to become a knight and he 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 has to go to the grail castle and he has to ask, why is the king sick? And when the king reveals his sickness, then he will be healed by the son. And Persephone is actually the son of the father. And so the redemption of the father through the act of the son is really big, big in this Capricorn myth. Mm -hmm. um, does that make sense? Yeah, starting to. Definitely. Um, 
I see the repeating theme of the father and the son and also this um, need for learning how to like work with the duality. I also see like the Cancer and the Capricorn, the Capricorn being often like the parental figure or the authority figure and then Cancer being usually more related to the child. Mm -hmm. um, so how to unite them. Yes, and then also Leo being the son of the mother and the Leo sign also really strongly constellated with the myth of the Holy Grail. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a candle behind. And I don't think, I think we got too much light for you to see it. But anyway, a student of um, my partner um, did this as a Christmas gift. So we thought we'd share it with you. <laughs> mm -hmm. so and it's other colors in the back and then it's supposed to reflect the the the, the candle supposed to shine through see blah 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 barely. Hmm? see it just barely mm -hmm. well coming back so yeah let's go Capricorn cancer is a big theme from the child but then when saturn is the ruler I mean, that's, I think like that's a huge piece of why the hermit is also so connected with Capricorn. In the later stages of life, then, you know, then, well, there's always that very stern. Uh, the hermit is associated as a tarot card with Saturnus. Mm -hmm. And we talked about this when we talked about Sagittarius. We have Sagittarius on one side of the winter solstice and 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 Capricorn on the other, so it's one of the solstice, winter solstice, and as such, it seeks to give form to the vision that was established in Sagittarius. So then it's a natural evolution of the Sagittarian, and, you know, in terms of the evolution of society, that Sagittarius Capricorn you know about what we what is the meaning of things sagittarius and the discipline and the commitment and the structure that's needed to give form to the vision of sagittarius those two signs very important straddling this winter solstice we talked about the fish goat we talked about following Sagittarius and the need to structure, security, and discipline. Anything else that we need to bring up? Not that. Well, I guess I would just say, like, everybody has Capricorn in their chart. So whether or not your son's in Capricorn, you maybe feel like this doesn't relate. We're all going to go through a sun period for the next four weeks here with sun and Capricorn. And it's really fun if you look at your chart and see if there's any planets in there. If anything is going to get aspected or triggered by the sun or other planets. Um, what we didn't do yet is dive into the chart of what it looks like when the sun goes into Capricorn. Do you want to do that? I think we're going to do that um, with the important dates. Okay. Why don't Should you I share some medicine? Yeah. Okay. So as some of you know, I love to put together the tissue cell salt part of it all by the way people really like this this uh this part of our show and uh they they're really missing it in the new moons and full moons but mm -hmm. we put it into this monthly forecast and then we'll be putting more uh, of these in future videos as well uh go ahead i'm sorry to interrupt you no it's all good so capricorn in our body, in medical astrology, Capricorn rules the knees, the bone structure, and the skin. Um, so if we look at the cell salt, that kind of puts it all together a bit more. Tissue salt number two, or calphosphate, calcera phosphorica, as it used to be called, um, or calphos for short these days. This is the second tissue salt out of the 12 in everybody. And it's found naturally in our blood plasma, in our saliva, gastric juices, bones, connective tissues, and teeth. One thing you'll notice is if you were to look at, for instance, the opposite of Capricorn cancer, it's tissue salt number one, cal calcium fluorite, and it's found in a lot of these things as well. So these two salts work together um, quite a bit. But calphos uh, shows up 
when we have deficiencies, it shows up like having bone issues. So it helps to bring calcium into the bones. It also can show up like things like eczema. So where there is too much inflammation or there's not a healthy um, blood flow going on. So if we think about Capricorn is liking structure and security, this is the part of our energetic system in our body that wants that as well. So if there's not good structure in our blood vessels, then there's not good blood plasma, there may be not enough calcium in our blood. Similar if our bones, and then it comes back into our teeth. So our teeth are very connected with our structure of our being. Um, they are the bones which protrude out of our system. And we can often see deficiencies in calcium phosphate if these kind of physical issues show up. So that can be osteoporosis, that can be growing pains. Um, fractures or bone breaks is a great time to be using this tissue salt to heal. And then also late dentition. So that's when the teeth don't show up um, in a typical timely manner when you're developing like in the childhood. Um, yeah, so some uh, ways to work with this. Um, Calfos is found naturally in things like almonds, cucumbers, white beans, dandelions, cherries, spinach, and dates. But you can also take it supplementally if you like, like little sugar pellets, kind of the homeopathic formula that was created a few, a few hundred years ago now. <laughs> and then there's herbs that are associated with Capricorn too. And these things really help, again, the blood plasma and then strengthen our core. So that would be things like bone set, red cedar, horsetail, slippery elm, and comfrey. These, all these um, have different properties to them, but they all fundamentally work to strengthen our core being. So that bone structure, so our ability to show up for the world and have a safe container so that we can um, show up in the best ways possible. That's quite amazing. So the bones, mm -hmm really important i have saturn and capricorn i have really strong bones but also saturn is responsible for the boundaries you know mm -hmm. it's a skin thing right mm -hmm. so then then how we protect ourselves against the outside world so the eczema and but also the structure huh? our bones you know how we're gonna last that's fascinating mm -hmm. i've been knocking my head a lot these days um, and so yeah, I gotta be careful <laughs> with my bones. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. So so you wanted to look at the chart, and I think that this is gonna be perfect. We're gonna look at the alchemical opportunities and we'll look at what the sun will do uh coming up, and that will be kind of a chart study at the same time. All right, show you that. Should we shall we should all well over her. We switch to gibberish sometimes. Um, so it's good not to take ourselves too seriously. <laughs> so, oh, well, oh, oh. So if you look at uh, this particular picture of Saturnus, you see the sickle and you see the sigh, right? That's the, to cut the wheat and that's the sickle. And then you see Aquarius, the water bear, it's interesting how uh, the water bear also has a fish tail. Oh, interesting. Uh-huh. And so the depth. And what's really interesting is that his, he has a wooden leg. The Saturn used to well, rules Aquarius and Capricorn. Yes. And 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 he has a wooden leg. <laughs> Interesting, huh? And he's an old man. The old king must die to give form or to renew the harvest for the next year. So it's the sacrifice. So that's Saturn, huh? I got to sacrifice myself so we can have a good harvest next year. And then I got to take the place of my father. And so a really potent archetypal structure. So December 21st, winter solstice, Capricorn ingress, happy solstice to everybody. Mm. Then on the 24th, sun sextile Saturn. And let's look at that on the chart. So we are going to be actually all month long, we have a sextile of Saturn to Jupiter. Oh, because it's retrograde and getting right. Okay. Right. 
And so then we have Saturn, Jupiter sextile. And so then we're going to experience a sextile of Sun to Saturn and a trine of Sun to Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And so, and this um, Saturn, Jupiter, you know, that's a very interesting, and we should flesh that out. We'll talk about that more in the coming video on the uh, full moon in Cancer, mm -hmm. which is a Christmas full moon in Cancer. How appropriate, huh? So first Capricorn, sun moves in to Capricorn while Mercury is coming out of Capricorn retrograde, mm -hmm. and then Mars is following it. So Mars will be entering Capricorn shortly as well. So that's going to be interesting. So that's that chart. And it makes the sextile to Saturn. What else is going to happen? So that's the first thing. Do you want to show it there? Yeah, let's okay. see what the, the next... Um, the big trine is later. Yes, the trine comes next. Or not next yet. So, so the 26th. Is the so the twenty fourth so the day before Christmas Sun sextile Saturn so what is that going to feel like a Sun sextile Saturn? Um, sextile tends to be more harmonious energy, so there's going to be a, a strong communication between the part of us that wants to maybe expand and gallivant and grow versus the part of us that's trying to refine and contain and make sure we get the tasks done. Also, Saturn rules the Sun in Capricorn. Right. So then that's a very strong relationship. So like on the 24th there, some really father-son issue, you know, contemplation of the sacrifice of the old king, you know, and, you know, the Saturn and Pisces, the creating the safe container. And so then that's, you know, and then it goes into what's next after that. What, what did you call Saturn and Jupiter together again? Well, Saturn and Jupiter is the is the relationship between Saturn and Jupiter, especially the conjunction is called the Maximo Conjunctio. The Jupiter and Saturn rule our social contributions to the world. Jupiter is my hope and my faith and my enthusiasm. Saturn is my discipline and my structures and my commitment to having that Jupiterian vision. Sagittarius is ruled uh, by, by Jupiter and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. Mm -hmm. So Sagittarius, the meaning, and then Capricorn, the form, right? And so, yes, they're really related to each other. And so we'll have this sextile between the two of them all month long. And especially at the, at the full moon, you're going to see um, um, a very powerful connection. And then the day after the full moon, there's going to be Sun trying Jupiter. So then the moon will come over here and at the full moon on the 26th, and it will form a bowl shape with Jupiter and Saturn. We'll see that in the full moon chart. And we'll get into that in the, the full moon video more. And then the 27, that's the sun trying Jupiter. So then that Jupiter Saturn, you know, my hope and my faith and my ideals versus my discipline, my structure and my commitment. Um, so a fabulous time to set your intention. And so that's going to inform the 24th, 25th, 26th, 27. And then we have a little bit of a break as sun moves into um, Capricorn, and then it's going to make a square to Chiron. Mm -hmm. So, and Chiron in Aries, we got a powerful set of eclipse coming up in 2024. That's all going to be in conjunction with Chiron. And, you know, and I was thinking about that, you know, what is going on with our time? And I think we talked about this in the last video, is how important this concept of healing is all about, right? Mm -hmm. How do I get to heal? 
my ancestral wounds, my childhood wounds, and also my trauma from life. And so then that Sun Chiron Square, uh, <clears throat> in conjunction with the North Node there, that will come on January 7th. There's the good inner work there of Capricorn. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Then on the night, Sun trines Uranus. So Uranus is over here. So then the Sun trine Jupiter, squared Uranus, and then now it's trining Uranus. And so that's you know a little bit restless but it's a trine so that feels a little bit better and it will also yeah so let's keep going i think when we were looking at those dates too when that happens it's going to be a few days after the full moon so the moon's going to be in virgo there's a grand earth trine and during that time that'd be like a really great time for any intentions that you've been setting there's gonna be a lot of manifesting power during that time of Uranus, like maybe sudden, sudden new windfalls or sudden new growth. See, I've been, I had this idea this morning in my, in my meditations that we need to put in this video, we need to put the important chart of the month, kind of, and that would have been the chart that we would have that done. Would have been the chart. Okay. okay, good for you, <laughs> good for us. Good, better, best, never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. Yeah. <laughs> If you guys want to see that, that's a Saturnian mantra. <laughs> good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good is better and your better best. Um, said Saturn once. Uh, and so then we come to the 11th. That's going to Capricorn new moon. So that means the sun and the moon will be together in Capricorn. At 20 degrees. That'll be a little activation for on the uh, conjunction for anybody born in... 19, what, 1990 to 1992. Also, what's going on is that we're getting closer and closer to Pluto. And I think that that's really what's important. So then January 16th, sun, that's wrong. Sun, sextiles. Oh, yes, yes, sextiles, Jupiter. I mean, Neptune, Neptune. Yeah. Yes. So then... So then there was the sun sextile Saturn and then the sun sextile Neptune so that the sun will make angle to Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, Jupiter, and Uranus all throughout its day. And then on the 20th, it's going to enter into Aquarius. Basically, the Sun and Pluto will enter into Aquarius together. And we talked about that in our last video, how important Pluto will be in the beginning of the year. And so then as Saturn moves through Capricorn, it will end Capricorn in the conjunction with Pluto which um, is going to be the first planet to cross Pluto, then Mercury, then Venus, then Mars. We have the Venus-Mars conjunction hitting Pluto. Um, so that sets the tone. And I think that we're really all feeling that. Huh? Like, like we were talking about that earlier before the video started about how this doesn't feel like the holidays. It really doesn't feel like the holidays this year. There's a lot of weight and heaviness and practical matters. And um, yeah, it's a, different, it's a different flavor this year, around, at least around where I am and my, my um, perception of reality right now. Well, in my life, it feels really the exhaustion is just so... You know, like all I've been able to do in the last three days is rest and sleep and just, you know, not really demand myself too much. And I, I you know, and that's a, you know, you know, we talked about Mercury retrograde. We talked about Venus being in Scorpio 
And then we talked a lot about the Mars um, Sun conjunction and then the Mars Mercury conjunction. But everything also, this Pluto and Pluto come into Aquarius and all the inner planets conjuncting Pluto. I think that there is a certain darkness that is inviting transformation. Mm -hmm. Really important times, huh? Does that feel right? Yeah, as you were saying that too, they were like, there's this collect collective exhaustion. And I was thinking too about how, why the holidays might feel a little different too is, I think there's a lot of people and after like a lot of um, things astrologically and in life that have happened since 2020, there's kind of a, a, a big challenge of letting go with that which doesn't serve anymore and really seeing societal patterns for what they are more and more and trying to understand which ones are serving us which ones aren't and so I think that, that comes up to question a lot when we talk about Christmas and I think that there's so much beautiful powerful tradition and practice with the Christmas time but I think that there's been a buyout that's happened especially the last 50 years and so there's a lot of reckoning with like how do I want to do Christmas from now on and what is the best parts and and use uh, Christmas and the New Year and the winter solstice and use apotropaic mm. rituals, you know, and replace the consumerism to, you know, holding sacred space and and caring for each other. And, and so I think that that really wraps up the whole Capricorn thing is that, yes, we can be ambitious. Yes, we can be disciplined. Yes, we can have structure, but if it's not in service to cancer, to the feminine, to the nurturing, to the introversion, if my soul isn't being looked after, if I'm not like looked after, then what good is that kind of, you know, you know, discipline, you know, or mastery at all costs, you know, what is this ambitious and so then that's that beautiful myth of Capricorn. Yes, the old king must be reborn to give room to the new king. And hopefully the new king is more sensitive to the needs of the feminine. Mm -hmm. yeah. That sounds like a good one. Thank you so much for joining us, you guys, and for staying all the way through with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for supporting our work. We'll keep the videos coming. This is Diana Robinson and I'm Martin Contois, MC Starman. Over and out. Whoop, 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 whoop. Happy Capricorn season.